Hello and welcome back to the Archeria Pigments tutorial series. Now ordinarily when I do these things I like to deal with all of the oscillator options before we go anywhere else because that's really the heart of the synthesizer. But in the case of pigments I'm not going to do that. The, the analog engine is so fully featured that we can afford to move on and talk about the filter bank and the modulation section. I think they're more important to cover and then we'll come back and deal with some of the other oscillator options later. So today we're going to do part one of two, um, dealing dealing with the, the filter bank. And the, the, the separation, the delineation is going to be today, we're just talking about multi-mode filters. There are lots of different filter options um, available for us to choose. We'll deal with all of the exotic stuff in the next episode. Today I really want to talk about just how the thing hangs together. And the first thing to bear in mind is that they're a permanent part of the audio signal path. Even if I turn both filters off, they are still active. In other words, the signal is flowing through them. If I press a note on the keyboard and turn the filter bank down, then we lose the sound. So even though the filter's not engaged, it's not filtering, the audio is still passing through it. And that will become important when we come to talk about the routing options. So let's deal with the filter itself. Here we have a really simple low pass filter. This is the most common type of filter and you've probably seen it before. And basically what it does is throw high frequencies away. First thing I'm gonna do is get myself a nice harmonically rich sound. So here's my sawtooth. And now when I pull the cutoff knob back, we throw those high frequencies away. We allow the low frequencies to pass through, low pass, but we throw the high stuff away. We also have, this is a resonant low pass filter, and so here is our resonance knob. And what this is going to do is create a peak or spike at the cutoff frequency, uh, which is currently 1.1k. So if I increase resonance, you'll see the spike begin to appear in both the graphical interface, which is a real-time representation of what the wave looks like, and then in sight. And here is the resonant spike. And if we go far enough, then we head into self-oscillation, which is um, a pretty advanced subject. I'll put a link to it somewhere. So what we're listening to here is a, an LP24 filter, a low pass 24 decibels per octave filter, which means that at that cutoff point, whatever it is, currently at 858 hertz, for every octave above that you go, you're throwing away 24 decibels worth of volume, which is quite a steep attenuation. In other words, the volume tails off really quickly. If we enter the mode um, drop down, then you can see that you can go down to an LP12, which is gonna be a gentler slope. So let's hear and see the size of the slope. It's about a 45 degree slope for the 24, and it's gentler with the 12, and obviously at its steepest with the 36. So those are all low pass modes. We also have the opposite type of filter, which is high pass. So if we switch to HP24, now we're letting the high stuff through, but we're throwing the low frequencies away. So this is always a very, very thin, sharp sound. The weird thing with the high pass filter is that the cutoff knob operates the other way around. So if you've got cutoff set all the way to the maximum, you've thrown all of your frequencies away. You bring them back by letting the low frequencies come back in. So with the cutoff all the way down to zero, it's not doing anything. Band pass creates a little hill. It's basically allowing everything at or around the cutoff frequency through. And finally, notch is the opposite. Now we're going to cut out a V. Wherever the filter cutoff is, we're going to attenuate that frequency and let everything else through. And here is our notch. Really clearly. 
Now you can see when I turn the resonance up then we don't get a spike like we did with the low pass filter. Different operation, what it's effectively doing is widening or narrowing the, oh that was horrible wasn't it? Na widening or narrowing the V. Get back to my low pass mode. So what's the KBD knob all about? It stands for keyboard. But what it basically does is make the filter track with the keyboard. Now by default, it's off. So whatever cutoff we have, we've got a, let's set it to 1K. Doesn't have to be exact, but that's close enough. So now we've got a low pass filter applying at 1K. I'm throwing all the high frequencies away. When I engage keyboard tracking, it's going to um, assign an arbitrary fixed point to C3. C3 is the middle of a seesaw, and below the seesaw, all the notes below C3 are going to get duller as I turn this keyboard tracking up. In other words, it's going to shift the filter um, cutoff down. If I play above C3, it's going to shift the filter cutoff up, which is going to make the notes sound brighter. So I'm going to play, uh, play C3 first. So this is our center point. And at the center point of the seesaw, uh, the keyboard knob has no effect. But every other note on the keyboard does. So now I'm going to press uh, a C2. Then I'll increase the keyboard control all the way. And we've just thrown some high frequencies away. What I'm now going to do is double the cutoff. So I'm going to go from 1K to 2 and play my C2 again and we're back to where we started. That is the same sound as when we uh, started off with our 1K sound with no keyboard tracking. And similarly on the other side of the keyboard if I press C4 and then turn keyboard tracking up it's going to get brighter. And then it turned my cutoff down to 500 to get back to our original sound. So it's making the filter cutoff track at the same octave range as the distance away from C3 that you've played. All of that has been dealing with filter one, but we've got a second filter right here. The um, dark gray on back, black background, I'm pretty much used to it these days. It seems to be all plug-in manufacturers love their invisible buttons, but it's here. Filter two is identical to filter one in every respect. The reason I'm bringing it in is because we need to talk about routing. We've got lots of flexibility in how we route to each of these two filters, both in and out. Now, the first thing that we need to do is head back into the oscillator section. Remember when we left this filter mix knob alone, I said we'll deal with it when we come to the filters. This is what it's all about. Now, by default, it's set to 100% F1 which means that all of the signal out of this oscillator engine is being routed to filter one. But we can hear filter two. If I put filter two into high pass mode and press a key, we hear no sound because the cutoff is currently set to maximum. So we're throwing all of the frequencies away. Filter two is live. There we go. Why are we hearing filter two if the output is uh, routed 100% to F1? Well, it's because these two filters are currently in series. So all of the signal is going into a filter one. It's coming out of filter one into filter two and then out of filter two to the amplifier. Now, this is something you need to know because it has profound implications, um, not only for your, your audio path, but also for your stereo. If I, this a little bit thicker so we've got a nice thick sound to play with. If I pan filter one hard left and filter two hard right and press a key, we get no sound because filter one is only transmitting audio on the left hand channel and filter two is only interested in the right hand channel. And so we've got nothing, there's no commonality between those two um, buses. Now here's an interesting one. If I switch the output to F2, what do you think we're going to hear? 
just sound in the right ear. We've basically bypassed filter one. The output is now going directly into filter two. Filter two is hard panned to the right, and so we hear it. It's only because we were passing through filter one in series that we were losing the we were losing the audio because it was routing all of its audio to the left hand side. If I switch this filter mix to 50-50, all of the signal is still in the right hand side, it's just quieter. It takes a little bit of work, uh, work to wrap your brain around this, but basically just think of these two separate, completely independent output streams. Now at the moment, everything that we're talking about is in the context of these filters being in series. So even though the filters are in series, we have the option to basically skip over part of it and, and start our story at filter two. But we're not done there because we don't have to send the audio through these two filters in series. We can send them in parallel instead. And in fact, any combination of series and or parallel. I, I kid you not, I, I just rolled my sleeves up because I think, right, okay, I need to explain this extra layer now. So what we're dealing with here is this knob up here called pre-effect sum. This controls the amount by which the series and parallel um, connection is made. So at the moment you can see on the little pop-up it says F1 into F2. Purely, that's exactly what's happening. That's a series link. If I begin turning this knob up, we start to get percentages. And so at a, as, as soon as we've left 100% series, now remember we had um, this weird situation where half of the signal was flowing into F1. Half of the signal was flowing into F2, but F1 is basically panned hard left and it has nothing to do. Now we've broken that pure series connection. We've got a little bit of parallel output, which means F1, filter one, is able to partially, at the moment we're set to 19%, partially talk directly to the outside world. And so finally, you're gonna hear something in your left ear really quiet but it is there. If I carry on turning this up F1's going to get louder. Now it's still being completely dwarfed by F2, this dominant sound um, riding roughshod over F1. So what I'm going to do is turn filter 2's volume down just temporarily and then we'll hear there's our left ear. Because we have this brash um, high pass filter sound in the right hand in the right ear it can kind of fool you into thinking you're not hearing anything in the left but you are and you can also see it actually in the stereo output that the right the right hand side is far more dominant more frequencies are getting through okay i'm going to tidy things up a little bit what i'm going to do is i'm going to set them both to low pass 24 and I'm going to set them both to more or less the same filter cutoff, about 2.5k. Both volumes are at 0 dB and we're fully parallel. So now your left ear is going to be completely full of filter 1 and your right ear is going to be completely full of filter 2, but they're going to sound the same. Okay, and we've got a nice healthy stereo signal. Basically the same thing is coming out of both sides. The reason I've done that is to show you the other routing mode, which is split. If I engage this, what's happening now is that I'm going to prove that those two um, filters are outputting genuinely independently to left and right. I think I've still got my pan set here, which is why uh, they're extreme. There's nothing unique or weird about filter one or two. I've just hard panned them. What we get with FX split is the ability to route either one of the filter outputs, F1 or F2, to one of the two um, FX units called FXA and FXB. And we haven't dealt with FX yet, and we're not going to get into the, the, the meat of it. But what I'm going to do for demonstration purposes is I'm going to set up a delay um, in bank A at one quarter time, and in bank B, at 1 16th, so you're going to get a fast delay in one ear and a slow delay in the other. And this will prove that these filter banks are going to different locations. So I'm going to turn filter 2 down. 
there's our slow delay in our left ear. Turn filter one down, filter two up. There's our fast delay in the right ear. Set them both on. In the FX split um, menus, you also see we have the option to basically invert that logic as well. You can send filter one to FXB and filter two to FXA. I, I have no intention of doing that, <laughs> but uh, you know, suffice to say it can be done. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. It really helps me out. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot.